Hi, Brian Lloyd here and this is my list of the 10 best movies released in cinemas this year. With restrictions easing here in Ireland in the second half of the year, a number of long delayed releases finally arrived in cinemas. With that in mind, let's crack on with our ranking of the best of 2021. In at number 10 is A Quiet Place Part 2. John Krasinski's follow-up to 2018's breakout horror has been described by some as being a cheap retread, but that's pretty unfair. Bringing in Killian Murphy and shifting the story's focus to the children provided for plenty of well-directed scares and also allowed for a different atmosphere to the rise to the surface. That's what makes Quiet Place Part 2 so special, that it has an emotional core to it that few horror franchises really have. Number 9 goes to The Suicide Squad. If you told me two years ago that the follow-up to David Ayer's Suicide Squad would be in on an end of a year list, there's a good chance I'd be checking to see if you'd taken a bad fall. Yet, James Gunn somehow managed to make the most irrelevant batch of supervillains into something quite relevant. The Suicide Squad neatly eschews expectations by doing what the other one couldn't. It made us care about these awful people, but not so much that we were worried when they died. It shouldn't be such a ballsy thing to kill off so many characters in a movie, but given how copy and paste these types of movies tend to be, The Suicide Squad made for an invigorating experience. Number 8 is Stillwater. Matt Damon's best work in 2021 wasn't carrying that super value bag around doggy, or even the ridiculous chin strap he had in The Last Duel. No, his best work was playing a slightly dim-witted oil driller who ends up in Marseille trying to figure out a way to get his daughter out of prison. Stillwater had all the density of a really good novel, in that the story unfolded with each scene rather than laying it out and letting the time run down to the end. At the level that Matt Damon operates at in this industry, disappearing into a role often takes a lot of makeup work. Just ask Colin Farrell. Yet, Damon is able to convincingly play his character in Stillwater by virtue of the strength of the script and his own performance. The real crime is not enough people saw Stillwater, but if you can, seek it out. Lucky number seven goes to the card counter. Throughout this movie, you feel like you're on a knife edge with Oscar Isaac's character at all times. He could lash out at any minute, but it's also tied up in style, mood, brilliant writing and dialogue that when it does happen, it's truly shocking. Of course, The Card Counter is a movie that requires patience. You have to sit with it, preferably in a darkened room, and just let the uncomfortableness of it all come out in its own good time. Number six goes to herself. It's no surprise that there's been a number of Irish movies preoccupied with housing, land, and property. While the likes of Rosie or Oracht are concerned with survival in a brutal land, herself asks another question. What if your home wasn't even safe? What then? Claire Dunn, writing and starring here, plays this out in the context of a domestic abuse survivor trying to find a place for her daughters as well as herself. What drives the movie forward is not necessarily survival, but resiliency. Claire Dunn's character has to find a way because there just isn't any alternative. And even in its darkest moments or its shocking twist, that strength still exists. Herself reminds us that no matter how vast the darkness is, we can and must provide our own light. In at number five is Annette, which will likely go down as the strangest movie of the year, as well as one of its best. How do I even begin to describe it? Well, it's got Adam Driver and Marion Cotillard playing a married celebrity couple who give birth to a wooden doll that becomes a celebrity in her own right. All of it done with songs by Sparks. Yeah, I, I can't really sell this movie too well, but look, take it from me. It's nuts, but it's great. You will either love it or hate it. There is no in-between. I know that's a cop-out, but I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Okay, at number four is Another Round, aka that movie where everyone's drunk all the time. Now, that's a simplification, but really, what it consists of is wonderfully intimate scenes whereby alcohol is introduced, and we see that it can and often does bring out wonderful responses in the characters. It doesn't question its morality, nor does it seek to judge its presence. Mads Mikkelsen's character becomes a better teacher, a better husband, and a better friend, but when it becomes a crutch, we realise that Another Round is not so much about the joys of alcohol, but the joy of joy itself, and how life is ultimately empty without it. Also, that dance sequence at the very end is worth it for the price of admission alone. At number three is Nomadland. 
If herself spoke about the idea of home as a place to heal and comfort, Nomadland examines the concept of home as wherever you want it to be. To be clear, Nomadland is a movie that could only really exist in the US and at this time. That it doesn't examine the underlying social and economic conditions might rankle, but really, Nomadland isn't that kind of story. It's a drop in, drop out kind of thing. We pick up with Frances McDormand's character as she's in mid journey and we follow her through as people come and go with her rambling a continuous presence. Even when she somehow travels back to her home, now empty and abandoned, it's only a quick pit stop before she's on the road again. The world that surrounds her seems so big, something that director Chloe Zhao really gets out without having to labour with it. Why wouldn't you want to see what's over the horizon? Nomadland expresses that desire in a heartfelt, unbearably human way. In at number two is The Father. Now when it comes to Oscar winning performances, it's very often the case that the movie which houses said performances quite ho-hum. The logic would be that the movie is completely elevated by that performance, to such a point where you can see nothing else but the performance. Eddie Redmayne's The Theory of Everything or Mahershala Ali and Green Book are recent examples of this. That is absolutely not the case here. Anyone who's known or cared for someone with dementia or Alzheimer's will recognise scenes from the father all too well. What makes it such a horrible, degenerative illness is that the mind sometimes snaps back, but the person is left struggling to catch up. Hopkins is able to deliver this with a mere look or glance, telling everything in the space of a minute. Like Amour, the father is about the cost of ageing, not for those just seeing it, but for those experiencing it. And finally, our number one of movies released in cinemas in 2021 is, you guessed it, Dune. Can we get that so darker priest doing his throat singing for a minute, please? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Dune is exactly why cinemas have big screens, good speakers and comfortable seats. Yes, you can have all those things at home, but seeing it in a cinema, the walls shake and rumble and the screen fills with stars, sand and sardaukar. It's unmistakable. You know you're in a cinema, not at home. You need to let it wash over you. It's not that it doesn't translate to TV either. It does, but you're depriving yourself of something grander. It's no surprise that IMAX has released Dune back into cinemas before the end of the year either. In short, Dune is made for cinemas, and that's why it tops our list of 2021. Don't forget to check our other lists for the best of 2021 here on YouTube and on site too. Happy Christmas, bye!